Hey everybody, this is our next lesson on the Imperial Era. Today we're going to be talking all about the part in American history in which we became an Imperial Nation. And so our topics for learning today, or our learning targets, are causes of the Imperial Era and effects of the Imperial Era. This is one of those lessons where we're basically going to keep it simple. So we've learned a little bit about how we have come out of the Gilded Age and we have a very, very powerful business class that is controlling a lot of things about our government. It controls a lot of things concerning work, opportunities for people. And basically, as the progressive era started rolling forward, the businessmen started to realize that the labor movement was becoming more powerful. And with the government actually reaching out after the Pullman strike and creating Labor Day, to support the laborers, the businessman is, is starting to realize that their labor force is beginning to become a little bit less controllable and they're going to be less able to um, keep people with low pay and not provide them with the benefits or in the working conditions that they actually deserve in our nation under our constitution and set of laws. So the businessman decides to go to other parts of the world and seek a more malleable or more controllable labor force. And so that is going to lead us straight into this imperial era. So part of the causes have to do with the businessman wanting to get uh, a, a market for their goods, to get a more controllable labor force, to reduce their labor costs, to be able to um, also uh, provide the United States the opportunity to gain more power and land around the world, to gain the opportunity to have places where they can um, resupply their ships as they sail around the world. And of course, there's always this idea that we need to go around the world and make life better for people and ex expand the idea of democracy and freedom for people around the world. So the ideas in in empire, the benefits of empire, promoting empire, all the things I just went through are part of the imperial, <clears throat> the causes that lead us to the imperial era. Um, yellow journalism is also part of the causes for imperialism and we have on this uh, presentation several examples of yellow journalism. We have these political cartoons. Remember political cartooning became very powerful in the Gilded Age. It was the main factor in taking down Boss Tweed, one of the most corrupt politicians in the Gilded Age. And so um, this idea that the press could motivate the public to support the United States going out and taking over other countries. And so yellow journalism, the reason it's called yellow journalism is because the articles were printed on this kind of yellowish newsprint. Um, these these articles are they're very influential. You know, you can see Uncle Sam looks like a greedy old man with big hands reaching out to get lots of territory. In this one, Uncle Sam looks like a protector. He's covering this poor uh, damsel in distress with the flag, with got his big sword ready to defend her. Up here, we have a cartoon that's uh, kind of a warning for us about, um, you know, we're going to help the people uh, because of the Spanish misruling them or doing things they shouldn't. Uh, Colombiana's coming to the rescue, um, but it's like the fryer, frying pan getting thrown into the fire. It's already kind of hot. You know, we're getting involved. It doesn't, you know, there may be some dangers involved with that, but when we fully get involved in this, it may create a situation, I don't know if you can read this term, anarchy. And so we can go kind of from bad to worse, getting involved in these uh, situations around the world uh, where we try to defend people and help them fight against their overlords, so to speak. So that was basically what was going on in uh, with the Spanish-American War. How it all got started was we have a group of businessmen who've gone to Cuba. They've set up some businesses. Um, the United States is casting around and, and basically looking also for territory to um, obtain to secure its place in the world alongside the other large nations like Great Britain, Germany, France, who are also gaining territory around the world and building up their um, their power and their influence in these other smaller nations. And so all these things coalesce with the Spanish uh, ruling Cuba and we decide that we're going to, to come in and help, you know, stop some of the abuse, abuses that are going on in 
Cuba with the Spanish ruling them. And so we basically send a ship to Cuba to show the, the Spanish, hey, you know, we're here and we're watching and we might get involved. So basically behave yourself. And the ship that we sent was the USS Maine. Well, all of a sudden the USS Maine, one day it blows up in Havana Harbor. The yellow journalism machine gets going and spreads this idea that the Spanish blew the ship up. And so, voila, there's your reason to go to war against the Spanish in the Spanish-American War. And before we go to war, though, there's some people who basically say, we're going to pass an amendment to the war declaration that says that if we win this war, we're going to free Cuba. We're not going to take it over as an imperial possession because we're all about freedom and justice, and we're not about taking over other countries. That's not what our value system is all about. So we go, we fought the Spanish-American War, one of the shortest wars in United States history. We win, and by the Treaty of Paris, we obtain several territories. Of course, we get Cuba, we get Guam, we get the Philippines, and we get Puerto Rico. And these are all possessions of Spain that we win from the war. All right, the effects of this very short-lived war were that we had some people who came out and said, you know, getting all this territory, this is really not what we're about. And these people formed an organization called the Anti-Imperialist League, and they had an opinion quite like this cartoon of the United States is, you know, doing a snatch and grab on all these territories. It's not the proper thing to do. Um, so the United States government wanted to make the statement that, you know, we go and take over countries to improve their lives, to make things better. And so we set up a Filipino insurrection and commission uh, or commission to um, deal with the Filipino Commission to go and improve the lives of the Filipinos. And, and basically this is in response to an insurrection that occurred because when the Filipinos found out that they were going to get their freedom like Cuba, they rebelled against us. And so we had a rebellion that we had to deal with and we had to go in there, put down the rebellion, and then we decided that we're going to start this commission up. We put William Howard Taft in, in charge of it. We're going to build roads. We're going to improve sanitation. We're going to bring education. So we thought we were really improving life for the, for the Filipinos. Later on, we will pass two acts, the Jones and the Foraker Act, which will give limited freedom to the Filipinos and also the Puerto Ricans. And then finally, the Platt Amendment will also be amend, another amendment uh, regarding Cuba, which will say that, okay, Cuba, we are going to give you your freedom, but we have some things that we want to get out of this. We want a military base at Guantanamo Bay. Uh, we want the right to interfere in your politics, your situation. If you go into debt, greatly go into debt, or you get involved in some type of uh, uh, military incident, we want to be able to uh, basically provide you with defense. So, like I said, it's kind of a mixed situation. On the one hand, we want to look like that we're doing good things for the people that we take over. And then on the other hand, we don't want to be completely releasing those people and letting them have their full freedom. So those are some of the effects. So we get an empire. We have an empire for the first time ever. We have, not, we have uh, the Philippines, Guam, Puerto Rico, and Cuba. All right, moving forward. So during this time as well, we began to attempt to get in on the markets in China. As we said, the businessmen want to create more markets for their good goods. And so we create a policy regarding trade in China. And we go there and we basically sit down with the Chinese and we force them, in a sense, we force them to trade with us, creating an open door policy. Basically, we go and we say, hey, you're going to trade equally with all the nations, uh, Great Britain, France, Russia, the United States, you're going, to, you're going to trade equally with all of us. And so that was considered to be the open door policy. Just like the Filipinos, the Chinese didn't like the United States coming in and telling them what to do, so they too rebelled in a rebellion called the Boxer Rebellion. And the reason it's called the Boxer Rebellion is because it's named after a type of martial arts boxing, like kind of like kickboxing, uh, in which the uh, people uh, rebelled against United States soldiers. Tragically, at the end of, the, of this era that we're calling the Imperial Era, which it's really not the end of the era because we still have an empire today, uh, President McKinley will be assassinated. I'm um, sorry, I misspelled the word assassination there. I apologize. Anyway, M President McKinley will be assassinated, and our next president to come to power will be Teddy Roosevelt. He is the vice president for William McKinley. So, to recap, 
imperial era starts with the Spanish-American War, in which we gain four territories. The effects are we have some people who are a little bit against taking over these territories without doing good. Many of these uh, issues and uh, acts and laws and policies we just re re discussed had to do with the United States proving that they were there for good and then also uh, leading us into this assassination that occurs at, in 18, uh, I believe it's uh, 1898 or 1900. You'll have to fact check me on that. Anyway, so that does it for this lesson. I will see you again when we will go through the Progressive Era.